Hello my viewers, welcome back to the channel. And by the video title, you know what this video is about. Pittsburgh Steelers Mock Draft 3.0. Let's get into it right now. The first pick of the draft, you know, I know the Steelers needs, of course, our center, you know, inside linebacker, you know, cornerback, safety, quarterback. Those are some of our top needs. And um, while I was going to select Jackson Power Johnson for the first time in the mock draft, was gone. He was gone at 20. He was gone before 20. Um, so I was looking around like, dang, the Seahawks took him. Yeah, so he was gone before 20. So I looked around. And of course, they have other offensive linemen like Frazier. But that, that might be a reach to take him in the first round. And other offensive linemen, um, of course, like Cedric Van Pran. But that might be a reach to take them in the first. So I went a different approach. And I took a DB. I was going to say cornerback. But he can play corner. He can play safety. He's one of the high, highest graded um, players in the draft. And that's Cooper DeJean from Iowa. Very good player. So he was at 20 and available there. So I took him. Um, the, the Steelers want to use him as safety. They can. They want to use him as corner. They can. He's very versatile. He's a good tackler as well. He plays in the backfield. He can get downhill. He can get in the backfield and make some plays uh, in the run game as well. He's very good in coverage, man-to-man -man coverage. And he, um, he kind of plays. Yeah, he has great awareness, great awareness and recognition of plays. And you watch him, how he match um, players step for step. Step for step, um, we've seen him in the secondary make plays. We've seen him in man-to-man -man coverage make plays in zone and in man. So he's able to do a lot of things. He can, he's like a chess piece. You can put him around anywhere like that. He is definitely um, the queen, the queen piece. You can put him in any spot, any spot right there on the board. He's a guy who can make plays all over. Um, you thought last time I mentioned, um, of course, who else we're talking about? I'm talking about, um, I think, Javon. Um, the other set, the safety. Cooper's on a different level. Cooper is a highly, highly elite level player in college, and I think he's going to translate over to the league. He's going to be generational, especially in the right scheme. Like, you know, Pittsburgh Steelers um, preaches hard nose style of football, preaches that that just like go out there and gritness and toughness, and he represents all of that. He's going to be a very good player, so he's available right there. I took him at that spot. The Steelers need a cornerback. And he's a safety. He fills two voids like that. I don't know if the Steelers have him play strong safety or they have him play corner. Because he kind of reminds me of a Tyron Matthew um, type of guy. Jalen Ramsey. I think Jalen Ramsey might convert to a safety later in his career because he has that type of play style a little bit as well. But Tyron Matthew. You know, Tyron Matthew, in college, he did everything. He played corner a little bit. played safety. Free safety, strong safety. play all over. And, you know, in the NFL, they have him in different spots as well, too. One of the best cover guys we have. He's a little older now, but he's still very good. I think Cooper John is kind of in that rim of play style. And if we can get a guy like that. Add him with Minka Fitzpatrick, add him with Joey Porter Jr. You're going to look, be looking at a very good secondary for the Steelers. At the second pick, I took Cedric Van Pran, offensive center from Georgia. As you know, um, Cedric Van Pran, like I mentioned before, I took him before in this. I think it was the second, I think it was the first draft I took him. No, it was, um, I don't, actually, I don't think I ever took him. I think I, I think I um, talked about him on the channel, though. I thought about the centers the Steelers should look at. He's a good player. He's very um, agile. For this guy that size, he's very agile. Got good footwork, good lower body control. Is um, powerful as well. So he can not only win the tack at the first level, he can get to the second level and make plays as well, too, down the field. Um, so he would be a guy who would be a good leader, a guy who can lead your offensive line. Um, very big, very strong. You know, the Steelers want to preach that dominance of just dominating your opponent, imposing your will, and winning at the line of scrimmage. Because you know in football, you can win at the line of scrimmage, you can control the whole game. Like that. You can win on defense, you control you control their whole, the whole game, basically. If you win on offense, you control the whole game, the pacing of the game. So if you can win on both sides, the Steelers, they win most of the time on defense, but on offensive side, we can start winning on that side of the ball and start controlling the pace of the game and playing at our pace and our level. We're going to be a scary team to be um, able to go, you know, to be able to stop. But I think Cedric Van Pran getting at it. And, you know, Darnell Washington and him already have chemistry. Darnell Washington kind of like our 6 old lineman. And, you know, Byron Jones is our, our left tackle. They have chemistry already. So all those, those guys, they have chemistry. They play with each other. Um, George Pickens as well played with him. Um, so a lot of these guys will have the chemistry already built. And chemistry is very important, too, in, in, you know, like in the, for a team. A lot of people always think the locker room don't matter or the team chemistry don't matter. That's the main factor because if you guys – are in like a friendly environment, a comfortable environment, you can thrive better. You can um, play better um, as well. So just having the guys you're familiar with too that know what you're going to do is going to help the team out a lot. Of course, we didn't get Jackson Power Johnson, but he's still very good enough that he might be a guy who might emerge to be Pro Bowl level. I think he can be Pro Bowl level, especially in the right team, the right scheme, with, you know, surrounded by Isaac Siamalu, surrounded by you know, Brian Jones as well, and, you know, and all of the pieces we have on the line, like James Daniels and stuff. So I think he's going to be a good, a good um, addition to the team. Moving on to the third, 
round, the 84th pick, I took Peyton Wilson, linebacker from NC State. As you guys know, Peyton Wilson, I took him before in the first one. He's a very versatile linebacker. Play, can play sideline to sideline. We've been missing that sideline to sideline guy. Of course, Cole Holcomb is a good cover guy as well, but he's not as explosive on um, getting um, to the pursuit. And we know um, we have Atlanta Roberts, who's explosive getting downhill and pursuing, but he's not really a cover guy, and you know, like sideline to sideline type. But having a guy in Peyton Wilson who can do both will be very good for the future. I know we're still going to bring back Atlanta Roberts. Uh, Holcomb going to be back as well, so we're going to be having those guys. But having him wet, ready, too, and preparing himself and getting them pumped up and ready to play, too, behind those guys and getting reps. Mark Robinson going to be getting reps as well. He showed a lot of um, play at the end of the season, too. But having a guy like Peyton Wilson on the team will be great for our future for the linebacker core because we got we got our team last year. The linebackers start dropping like flies a little bit. I feel like it's time for us to go younger in that position. So get a guy like Peyton Wilson, build around him, and let him learn some things. I think he would be a guy who can be a dynamic piece for the team and go out there and make enough plays to help us, you know, win. You know, have he can, he can cover tight ends, he can cover guys in the slot a little bit. Those running backs that come out the field, you know, some of those receiving backs who have to um, line up, he can cover those guys. But he has that ability, that speed, that quickness, and that good pursuit and close out speed. And he can play zone coverage as well too. So it's different. It's different ways you can use him as well. So if you get a guy like that, um, and he, he happened to be a three, he might be going in the second round. But if he happened to be a three, you gotta take him. You got to. Moving on to the fourth pick, on um, the fourth pick, the hundred in mean, the fourth round, the hundred twentieth pick, I took Josh Newton, cornerback from TCU. Now. I took, I took him based off the Steelers using Cooper DeJohn more as a safety. I think they probably use him more in that sense because you can just bring him down, have him cover a guy, and you can have him play inside. You can have him do a lot of different things as safety. Like how they used to do Tropa Malu. He used to be all over the place. So I think Josh Newton, cornerback, TCU, he was there available. I took him. He's 5'11". You know, he has good arm length. He's got great technique as well. He played a ball um well too and he's a, a ball hunter you know you'll find a way to hit the ball out you'll find a way if a guy every time he contests a catch you find a way to break it up he's very good with his hands like that and like swinging and knocking the ball out kind of like christian gonzalez was last year i'm not saying he's christian gonzalez but kind of like he was you know had that good hand skill you know um not the biggest guy in the world um and josh newton that's kind of the knack on him a little bit not the biggest guy uh, he's 5'11 195 pounds but you know the way some cornerbacks in the league been like 6'2 6'3 we're seeing 6'4 corners we're like dang but and overall, he's on um, 5'11". That's pretty good height for a cornerback and 195 pounds. So he has the size to match up against some of those guys. His speed is not as fast as some of the other cornerbacks in his draft class. Um, that might be a little knock on him. Maybe that's why he kind of ran the third or fourth roundish. But I think if you get him on the right team and put him on the right spot, if he's playing on the opposite side you know, of a JPJ, he can go out there and thrive for sure. And he can play inside as well, too, because he's very physical. And he, um, good, he's good in, like, in, like, cutting like that too like so when guys are cutting and he like got to turn his hips we got to move his hips so you watch some of his film he's very good at doing that very good at um kind of like following the receiver and doing different routes like that you know some of those routes that some cornerbacks struggle in with guys cut out or hit a wheel route or do the whip routes he's very good at covering that he, he, he find a way to make a play on all those um and all those times and stuff and always just find a knack for the ball you know hitting that ball out pushing that ball out you know they always preach that active hands active hands as a cornerback you know, as a DB in general, active hands, as you know, you can't get there, you might swing your hands up in the air like this, and you might deflect something, or if a guy beats you, but you pursue and stay pursuing in, and you swing your hand, you can get a knockout or a fumble. So he's a guy like that. He's one of those guys who hustle hard, who plays hard, who has great technique and great patience as well. He just lacks some of the physical capabilities, you know, like the speed and stuff. Um, So I think Getting him right there will be good, especially as your number two guy. And maybe he might emerge as a top guy if you can build around him and keep him in that same spot and put him in the best positions to go out there and succeed. So I took him at um, the fourth round. So let's see, on um, the next pick, I took Joe Milton, quarterback from Tennessee. As you guys, I think I mentioned, I think I took him in the first draft, if I'm not mistaken, in Tennessee. The first draft? Yeah, first draft, because I think the second draft, I took Michael Penix Jr., second round. Yeah, the first draft, I took Joe um, Milton. Um, Joe Milton, quarterback for Tennessee, like I mentioned before, he's a guy kind of like Josh Allen type style. I ain't saying he's Josh Allen, you know, but his play style is similar to Josh Allen. He's 6'5", about 230, 40 pounds, uh, has a strong arm, has a cannon of arm. You watch him at that senior bowl and you watch him, his, like his highlights and his film, you've seen um, like him go out there and just deliver that ball like a rocket. And he's very athletic too. He can get out the pocket. He can use his legs to create plays to run down the field he's very mobile very agile as well very athletic player powerful strong player the only knack on him is the inaccuracy at times so sometimes he can get inaccurate he has a strong arm he can get the ball out there but sometimes he get a little inaccurate sometimes he kind of um 
you know, and they like, kind of get inconsistent at times. So I think the right team, they work with them, put them around the right scheme and weapons, they'll work. And the Steelers offense with Arthur Smith coming in there will be a perfect offense designed for him because yeah, it'll open up so much. You know, having that run-based offense, we setting things up with the play actions, the bootlegs to give him ability to use his legs, to make a decision to use his legs to run and follow the blocks or throw it, throw to somebody like that. And like kind of like um, building them up in that style and that scheme, it'll work perfectly. Um, we've seen it work for, of course, Josh Allen's. Last year, they started doing that a little, a little more, you know, running the ball with James Cook. We've seen it work for Jalen Hurts as well. A lot of different quarterbacks that were strong arms who was very talented, but, you know, they maybe struggled with uh, different instances as certain accuracies. But Joe Milton kind of fall on that threshold a little bit. And those type of quarterbacks right there, you know, very agile, strong arm, has all the physical um, capabilities you just got to get consistent you know and making timely plays and I think him in the fourth round I don't think he'll be in the fourth round I think he might be gone like third round but in the mock draft they have him in the fourth you know like the simulator always do what they want to do so he have him in the fourth round so I think he will be actually a good selection to take right there especially not depending on what the, all the Steelers are going to do in free agency now the Steelers in free agency even if they sign a quarterback but they bring in Russell Wilson or Kirk Cousins or they trade for a guy I still will draft Joe Milton just in case, like that. Now, now you trade for a guy like Justin Fields, you probably wouldn't draft him because he's young and stuff. But if you like sign like Kirk Cousins, who's like 34, 35, Russell Wilson, who's 30, I think 34, 35 years old, around that range, uh, I think you'll still draft Joe Milton because for the future, he can learn behind those guys and learn some things, some cool things. I don't know if the Seahawks are going to uh, roll with Geno Smith again, but I wouldn't mind Geno Smith as a Steeler either. You know, so a lot of guys can be better than Kenny Pickett. No offense to Kenny Pickett. Well, usually when you say no offense, offense used to come after it, but no offense can you pick it, but he's just not the quarterback for our team, you know? He's just not the quarterback for the future. I mentioned before, I said, remember Kenny Pickett first year, his rookie year, I said that I was going to give him the second year period, you know, and if I, if I, if I enter in third, year three, I'm going to give my full analysis on how I think he is, because sometimes players might have a bad first year, but they have bounced back second year and be like, okay, there you go. Trevor Lawrence, for example, that first year was a little shaky with his own um, stats. Second year, went out there and balled out. I could Kenny Pickett a benefit of the doubt. I was like, okay, first year, he showed some glimpses here and there, had some big time plays, like, okay, like later in the year. And I said, year two, I had high expectations for him. And then we went out there, add some pieces on the old line. We added some more guys on defense as well to help. You know, the defense is already good. Defense is doing everything they can, but having a good defense and having a better old line, you have two running backs in Najee and Warren. We went out there and um, added Allen Robinson. We added some guys. So we were like, okay, this is time for him to go out there and shine. And he went out there. And he didn't shine. You know, he didn't lose games, but he also didn't win the games either. They kept saying that Kenny Pickett had this many game-winning drives. But if you actually watch the games, like a Steelers fans watch, you'll see that mostly was, they shouldn't call them um, Kenny Pickett game-winning drives. They should call them defensive players game-winning stops. Because most of those plays came down to one of the defensive players making the play. I've seen KZ make an interception for the game winner. I've seen, um, oh, what's it name, Kawan Alexander make an interception for the game winner. i see a lot of our defensive players get big-time stops. To stop them from stop a team from scoring. Remember, Leon Wallace got the interception against the Raiders, make a game-winning play. So a lot of the defender players and defensive players made plays to end the game. So they gave it to Kenny Pickett because he's at the last scoring drive. But if you watch the game in entirety, kind of just pranced around, coasted around throughout the entire game, had one good drive. So I really wouldn't count that as a full game-winning drive, especially if my defense got to go out there and save the day again. So if you watch the games like the Steelers fans watch them, we there are a lot of Steelers fans like saying. Don't fall for that crap. That, that, that crap on um, they went and drives. Now a few of those he did he went out there and did his thing. A few of those made plays and stuff. I'm getting credit for that. But he just isn't good enough to help us win in the long run. TJ Wide is getting older. He's 29 years old. Cam Hayward about to, on the verge of retiring. Alex High Smith getting his prime as well. Making his Patrick in his prime with the injuries catching up sometimes to some of these players. We have a key key defensive guys. Guys on offense are amazing. George Pickens, Deontay Johnson, Warren, um, Harris, all those guys. We need the quarterback position to be right to win. But last pick, I mean, um, the sixth pick, I took um, Isaiah Williams. Sorry, I got off track a little bit by random by Kenny Pickett, but it's okay. But the sixth pick, um, sixth round, my sixth pick for the draft, which actually, my one, two, three, four. Oh, well, seven pick for the draft. I thought we had two, four picks. Yeah. I took Isaiah Williams, receiver from Illinois. He, um, He's a very shifty guy. 82 catches, got good hands. Oh, uh, a thousand yards, five touchdowns, average twelve yards per catch. He's very shifty, very quick. He now uses um quickness too and speed as well. Can make plays down the field. Um, he's not the biggest guy in the world. That's why uh, he might be might drop a little bit in the draft. He's not the biggest guy. So like, when it comes to run blocking, when it comes to making some plays in the air, 
Um, you like watch some of his film, making some plays in the air, or making like plays where it's like heavily contested. He might not come down with them all the time because he's a frat, like a, a smaller, on like built type of guy. I think he's like five foot. What is, what is he five? He's five ten. He's five ten. Be like one hundred like seventy eighty pounds. So like some guys might, you know, some of the bigger cornerbacks nowadays might bully him around out the way a little bit. But he, he is very tough as well. So he makes some plays here and there. But he's, he kind of if you watch his film, I'm not saying he's this guy. But if you watch his film, he looks similar um, to this guy, Tony Brown. I'm not saying he's Tony Brown. I'm not saying he's A B. But he looks very similar. You look at his route running, his shiftiness. When he get the ball in his hands. And he like put a foot down and started stepping. It looks similar. I'm not saying he's Tony Brown. It's like, but if you like look at Tony Brown. Remember he was drafted what in the fifth, sixth round, and then, you know he made some plays and he got himself to this level. I'm not saying he's gonna do that, but he has those like that type of play style, the tendencies of a A B style player. You know, a guy who's not the tallest or the biggest, but he is quick and he's fast and he has good route running ability as well to make those big time tough plays. So if Isaiah Williams is available. I think you get him. And plus, you look at his numbers. Every year he has improved. Uh, I think he had like 500 receiving yards on his um, sophomore year, then 700, his junior year, then 1,000. This year as well, he's improved every time. So I think he'll be a guy who might be a sleeper pick. A lot of people have him sleeper picks like him, Aaron Casey, and some other guys around the league, Kyrie Williams, who's some guys who might fall maybe third, fourth, fifth round this, sixth round maybe two as well. Um, Johnny Wilson. Those guys might be some guys you might need to look out for because they could emerge to be very spectacular later rounds. We've seen a lot of later round guys, especially receivers, make some make an impact here and there. So we're going to see Isaiah Williams if he gets drafted by us. That'd be a great addition. I think the Steelers are very good at not only scouting receivers, but you know going out there and developing receivers as well. So I, I'll be all for it. And the last pick um, was the seventh round, 238 pick. I took Darius Muasak. Muasel, Mua, Sai, something like that. Misa Musa, Mickey Mouse. But I took Darius Mua Sai, linebacker from UCLA. Um, just, just for an extra linebacker depth, because we need some more linebackers. He can play edge, he can play inside as well. So he can he can play both styles. He's a very good tackler, but he struggles in like no, he's he's not the biggest linebacker. He's like 5'11, a little shorter and a little smaller than some of the linebackers, but he still can make plays. We see him have a high motor. He's very one of those effort type guys. He can get 110 effort going out there and tackling, and making plays. I can't really find too much film on him, but the little things I did, the little things I did find, you know, he go out there and make some plays. He's like one of those guys on uh, the Steelers would love to have. You know, one of those pieces like okay, put him out there. He's gonna go out there and grind. He might not be the most talented, might not have the best technique, might not, might not have the best skill. But can go out there and just hustle, and you look. Everyone wants a, a guy who gives effort on the team, who hustles on the team, and who just be the high motor on the team. So I took him at the seven pick, the last pick in the art mock draft. But that's all I got for the video, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I think I did a good job in uh, selecting these guys. Cooper D. Jean, if he is available, the Steelers might take him because I think he'd probably be gone by pick ten, probably more 10, 10 11, 12 ish. He'd be gone by then. But if he is available, like the mock draft simulator had him, I would definitely take him because he's he's a guy who can. Not saying he's Trevon Malu. I always say this for everybody. I'm not saying he's Palomalu or Ed Reed, but he has that versatility style of a, you know, Palomalu is very versatile. You can put him in any spot. Ed Reed, you can put him around as well, too, in the secondary. Also, um, Tyron Matthews, you can put him around, too. I'm not saying he's those guys, but he has the tendencies and the play style of those guys. If you watch his film in Iowa and you see the plays he made, you'd be like, this man is good. Like, he's very good. Like, you no, know, like sometimes. You see a guy, people might say he's very good. You watch him, you're like, okay, they're good, but there's some things you might see. Watching him, I didn't really see any weaknesses. You know, the only thing you can really say about him, maybe the penalties, you like JPJ. JPJ didn't really have no weaknesses either, but the only thing they can say about him was they saying, oh, JPJ, he got a little hands, he might cause penalties. That's the only thing they say about Cooper DeGene as well. Um, but besides that, everything else is just, he has the speed, he has the um, tackling ability, he has the recognition, the awareness, he has the coverage skills, man to man, and his own coverage. He can play inside, he can play outside, he can play safety. He probably can play linebacker too if you put him in that spot. He can play everywhere. Like I mentioned before, the queen piece in the chessboard. Put him all around. So, Cooper DeJean going to be a great addition if the Steelers was to get him. I hope, hey, if he's there, if, he, if he's there and Jackson Power Johnson is gone, I, I'll take him. I'll take him. I'll take him for sure. I'll definitely take him because he can be a game changer. And so, it's, it's a lot of different centers in this draft too as well. Cedric Van Pran, Frazier as well, Christian Hayes. He's an officer guard, but he, I think he can move. He can play center too, as well. So most of the guys inside can play a lot of different positions and uh, move around. So I, hey, if he's available, you take him. But that's all I got for the VLC guys. Hope you guys enjoyed it. 
If you did, leave a like and subscribe for more content. And I'll see you guys next time on the channel. Peace out.